Welcome back to Sheffield Live TV on a Thursday night, talking Sheffield, talking football, talking uh, ice hockey as well with uh, the skipper of Sheffield Steelers, Jonathan Phillips, with Kevin Gage, who's a, an avid Sheffield United watcher, having played during some of their peak years of modern times in a Dave Bassett team. He's done some analysis on this season with the Blades sitting in seventh place on what's been a very iffy season so far. We'll, uh, talk about the theories that he's, he's brought forward here on that sheet of A4. We've also got James Gregg, who's going to join us to talk football generally, but also other sports. Everything as well, yeah, a bit of ice Absolutely. hockey in there as well. Well, there's the rugby union in there as well. Yeah. Obviously, Kel Brook, he set his date for his world title fight at the Sheffield Arena. So exciting times. Excellent. We've got, I've invited, I'm trying to get Kel Brook in, actually. I think he'd come I've in. made a bid today. I've made, <laughs> made a bid, you know, with limited resources, as you can imagine. It consists mainly of a pint across the road <laughs> yeah. uh, after, the, after the show. Uh, and a mention of the fact that uh, Kevin Gage, of course, is actually a, a restaurateur and a, a hotelier these days, aren't you? Uh, well, that's very kind of you to mention, yeah. The oh, Manor House in Dromfield, yeah. It's... Manor House in Dromfield, yeah, you, which the... you run. Uh, how different is that from being a, be, be, being a footballer? in terms um, of workload it's 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 very different <laughs> it's uh, it's completely different but uh, I, I never particularly wanted to go into football after finishing so uh, it's a bit of a cliche i know but i went into the license trade and Mo a um, lot of players do but uh, well, a lot of players used to i don't think they will do anymore because no. i think the money in football these days uh, i don't think they need to you know buy yeah. a pub or whatever they want to do My, mine's more of a you know, like a bar and a, and a hotel boutique hotel uh, the cafe bar, so it's a bit of a like an all bar one, but slightly smaller version. Yeah, because pubs used to open at twelve, close at three, open again at six, close at ten. But now it's almost like a twelve-hour cycle, yeah, well, all purpose. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, we don't shut. We're, we we've got a night porter on all, all all through the night, and we're a hotel, so we're open at seven in the morning and go all the way through to. You know, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock at weekends in the evening. Get a drink any time of the day or night, yeah? For you, Alan, definitely. Thank, Thank, you, very much. Much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. That's all we wanted to hear, wasn't sure it? to pop in? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think we should. I Thank think we you. should. Come on, I'm going to put you out of your misery. <coughs> We're going to talk Steelers, by the way, shortly. We're going to talk James Gregg on everything. Yeah. This piece my, of paper. My sheet, of, eight, my sheet of A4 nice. has got a fantastic build-up. I don't think I can do it justice, <laughs> to be honest. It was just a few, it was just a few notes to stop me forgetting what I was going to say. Um, it, it was it was just something I knew I was coming on, and uh, I'm glad you knew. Uh, <laughs> obviously, we we, we spoke, don't tell some people. We spoke at the Coventry game about this, that, and the other, which is the live yeah. game which we saw, uh, and we scored from a corner in that game and, and won it one nil. Yeah, Billy sharp. Goal. Yeah, Billy sharp. sharp. Didn't know anything about it. Hit him yeah. on the back of the head and went in, and then um, we scored from a corner on Saturday at Colchester in the last minute, and again it got us all. Or three points, and they got two extra points virtually, and it just got me thinking. I was the, I, I, the more I thought, the more I, I realised we've scored from quite a few corners recently, and um, I do like the analysis side. And my, my son is actually a, is an analyst, an analyst in uh, in the MLS in in the USA, so I, right. I know the background to it, and I speak to him regularly. Um, and just to, just not don't want to bore people, but just to put some background figures, uh, some numbers to you that Sheffield United are currently uh, averaging about six or seven corners a game. And, and I, I asked a couple of uh, football friends that I know, foot, Sheffield United fans, and I just put the question to them, how many corners do you think it takes to score a goal in football? And I got various answers, a dozen, somebody, the highest was 15. And the actual answer is it's one in 33 corners wow. gets a goal that's in a football. That's a lot of corners. And that's yeah. not just in League One. That is across world football. Is that right? You no, know, it does vary sometimes, obviously, season by season and team by team, short corners, etc. Barcelona maybe won't swing many in. But if you take an average through the years, through any league, whatever, it's, it's like a 3% chance of scoring a corner. United at the moment are exceeding that average for well goals and corners. Yeah, yeah. So, so I look back on the goals United have scored and how they were scored uh, just this morning. And up to the Barnsley game, we'd actually scored from four corners, all by Neil Collins, funnily enough. Right. So that's, uh, I think, it's 26 games, and we'd scored four goals. So you usually score a, a, a goal one in six games with United seven corners per yes. game average. So we were exactly on track. But since Barnsley, and I've just this is why I wrote it down, so I've got to make sure the goal scorers are there. Basham scored at Barnsley, and the next game was yeah. Coventry, and Sharp scored. The very next game was uh, Scunthorpe and Sharp scored again from a corner. These are all from corners. Yeah. 
The very next game was Bradford and Edgar scored. Not directly from a corner, but it was part of the corner. It was a half clearance back in the yeah. box and a goal which, which counts as from a corner. Um, and then we had a, a, a three-four game gap, and then the Colchester game where where Basham, I think it might have been Edgar, has scored again. What conclusion do you draw from all of that? Well, basically, we these goals—they're not just goals from the corners, but they have been absolutely crucial goals at crucial times in the game. It's not like scoring when you're two 0 up mm. and somebody gets the third, or you're three 0 down and somebody scores. These have been crucial match-winning ga- uh, goals. Yeah from corners and from set but, plays, and it's it's actually got seven extra points. But they're forcing, you, you said, I think, six to seven corners per game on average. That needs to be higher, doesn't it? No, that, that actually is, uh, with in, in, the, in League One, we're third in the list of how many corners we is get per right? game, yeah. It's actually, if you, to be really, make too fine a point, it's six, 6.73 <laughs> at Millwall, <laughs> the highest was 6.8, right. and then it comes Burton. So he's that, not, that, he's that not is, been to bed for a few nights. Uh, that, is, that, that, that is quite, it's quite <laughs> an average that? figure. The yeah. worst is Swindon, who we play on Saturday. They only, don't even get four corners a game. Correct. So all the teams are about five, six corners. How different from your days with Wimbledon and Sheffield United, who traded on forcing set pieces yeah. and corners around the box? It's so, it's so important. It always has been important. And you can talk about formations or ways of playing or possession football, which is the key phrase at the moment, you know, yeah. we see it everywhere. You know, set pieces are so vital to the game of football. And, uh, and, and through the years, through the leagues, and world football, the number of set goals scored from attacking set plays is always about 30, 35. Yeah. Wimbledon, my old team of Dave Bassett and Sheffield yeah. United, used to work on 40% of our goals were scored from yeah. attacking set players. But there are fewer corners in the game now because of that possession football that everybody's playing, so it's not reaching the other end as quickly as it used to, and there aren't that, as many. That, that, that could be true, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. not certain how many corners Sheffield United or other teams would have forced in 10, no. 15 years ago, but that may well be true. That's I think a f- it, fascinating I mean, I mean, one of the Billy Sharp goals that was scored, it yeah. was it was a well-worked move. That drew, you know, a couple of people made a run, drew some defenders yeah. out. Sharp was basically left alone in the middle of the box and he just had a free shot on goal. I remember that one. And it was a fantastic... And yeah. you instantly thought, watching that at Bramall Lane, you instantly yeah. looked at it and you thought, I did practice that on the yeah. training yeah. And And it's great, it's great that you've come up with all that. Actually. Because, the, yeah... Uh, to go on to say, I remember that incident, and he scored yeah. a similar goal at Scunthorpe yes, to win us yeah. that game as well. So we're not talking, this is not just luck. You know, no. a, a huge amount of time goes yes. into practising set pieces, and it's yeah. about the delivery. You've got to get to good delivery, obviously. The people making the runs have got to make the right runs into the right areas. Yeah. Everybody's got to do their job. You might have four players making a run to free one player yeah. You know, yeah. at the near post or far post. Hey, so, what about this? Are you, are you following this? Are you a football fan, J- Jonathan? Or Jono, as they call you, at Steelers? Shall, shall I say yes? <laughs> you can no, if you like. Uh, I'm not, honestly. I'm, uh, I've never been great at sports uh, in my time. Not hockey, even ice hockey, hockey? Hockey was the only thing which kind of... How come? Um, I took to. I don't know. I was just never, never a good sport. What did you try sport. and play? I've obviously tried playing football and rugby in school, and um, you know, used to me- mess around with uh, with friends. But so yeah, you, I was you, never, never, never great at. Uh, you've picked one of the hardest sports, sports, though. You're great at one of the hardest things. I mean, just skating is, is a hard skill <laughs> to start with, isn't it? Just standing up on the ice. Yeah, yeah, it was just something I I took too quickly and and nat- naturally, really. Um, yeah. And then you know, just kind of used to rollerblade in the street and you know, stick handle with stones and you know, little tennis balls. So. Not only is he very skillful, but it's it's a, such a physical thing as well. Strong and ro- robust. The injuries. You, come on, just tell us the injuries. <laughs> I'm not sure. We've only got 14 minutes left. <laughs> just tell us the injuries you've had. Is, is our own owner watching? Or <laughs> <laughs> um, probably not. <laughs> yeah, it, we obviously you know there's a lot of hitting. It is a is a physical game. So I think myself, I broke my ankle, um, two knee surgeries, broken collarbone, broken nose, broken ribs. Um, what else? Uh, sports hernia. Uh, yeah, a few. Is that it? Yeah, I think. Nothing I think else. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> you can't few, think of anything else. A few torn muscles, but yeah. What about as that compare with you, Mr. Gage, in your career? I've got five broken noses. I can probably match <laughs> yeah. you there. But uh, 
No, it's, it's, it's a tough sport, isn't it? Isn't it? Just, Sometimes it I've really watched is. it on the TV. And, it's, oh dear. and the language of it. Let's just... I'm sorry, James, I'm going to bring you in Thanks a minute. So but these, these, <coughs> these, I don't know if you heard it. Paul Thompson, the other week, uh, defeat at Cardiff, went absolutely ballistic. Heard his interview with David Sims. I was riveted by it. Uh, just tell us some of the, A bunch of homers was one of the things he came out with. Uh, after this defeat, there was other stuff as well. I'm sure it was watered down from what he told the team. Yeah, no, he uh, he kind of blew up in the room there just before he gave that interview, and yeah, I think he told us to to go go find our gonads or, or <laughs> right, okay, it was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was along them lines. So, um, have you found him? Yeah, I think I think I think we did. <laughs> I think we did. We kind of. Once he calmed down, we kind of, you know... So this is not fake. Some, you know, you get... Some managers might do it for effect. You know, I'm going to go in there and really sort of... That was just... He was annoyed. Angry, oh, yeah, furious. no, definitely. I mean, I mean Tom is a, a passionate guy about, you know, what he's, what he's trying to build, and um, he puts a lot of pride and a lot of effort into to what, he, what he wants from his team. So, you know, he was... That was, uh, that was all, all does it, real. Does it work, that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to let let any guy down. You know, when you when you're signed to a team, you want to be the best you can be. So, if you if you find out that the manager, the coach, is not happy with what you're doing, you you know, you feel like you've let let, let yeah. that person down. So it wasn't specifically the team, not individuals. He wouldn't do that in front of everybody. No, not bad no, that. yeah, no, that that never really goes on. It's it's, it's mm. always as a team. If 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 he's got a problem with with one player, then you know he'll 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 call that player and you know mm. go into the office and and talk things through, but. Yeah, no, he doesn't. He, he won't. He won't just call a guy out. If if he does, is is in the ways that we're used to. We know that we can take, and mm. um, you know, is is more just constructive. But yeah, he'll never. I can understand it being more effective in ice hockey, even than football, because you had a game the next day, didn't you? You're yeah. nearly always bouncing from from one game to the next. But you must have had, you know, in your time, who was the who was the most ferocious manager after games? I know the answer. Well, yeah, well, you know the answer, but I will say, and you know, Bassett obviously um, was renowned, you know, for the ferocity of his attacks. Uh, not all just about football. The thing about Bassett is he used to tear you, tear you a strip off about everything and anything. It was about your personal life or whatever, <laughs> whatever, you, whatever he fancied doing at the time, because he just used to go off on these, these weird tangents, you know, just in his own little world, just you know, screaming and shouting and effing and blinding and. Um, he kind of got used to it in the end. It kind of lost a bit of effect because I yeah. played with him in two spells at Wimbledon and then Sheffield United. So the second time round at Sheffield United, sometimes you think, oh, here we go again, you know. But yeah. you kind of got the gen general, general picture of what and he was trying to do. And yet players had tremendous loyalty to him, yeah. despite that. And despite yeah. the fact he hardly ever praised you. It, and I... it, was all, it was all from the heart. You could tell, <laughs> you mentioned the word passion. Um, it, was, it was completely from the heart. You knew he was a winner. You knew he, it meant so much to him. Um, so you, you tried not to take it too personally, although when he's you know, two foot yeah. from your face spitting at you <laughs> and shouting at you, it was different. Hair dry, real hair dry. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. But um, you kind of got on with it, you knew it was for the best of the team, and, and it, was, it was finished on Monday, you know, you'd, you'd walk past him in the office on Monday, whatever he'd said to you on a Saturday or a Tuesday after a game, Completely forgotten about. We move on, you know. Yeah. Not a problem at all. That is healthy. Right, I'm going to come back to you guys. You've got plenty more to say. No, we uh, So have you. Go yes, on. plenty to talk about. We'll start with the two football league clubs in the area. Obviously, Sheffield United already touched on them. Scoring from, surprisingly, a corner to beat Colchester in the 91st minute. Chris Basham with a goal last weekend. They take on 14th place Swindon Town at Bramall Lane on Saturday. Sheffield Wednesday take on Reading at Hillsborough, who are coming off the back of that fantastic 5-2 victory over Huddersfield in the FA Cup on uh, Tuesday night. So hopefully they're not just running into a bit of form. The Owls will be looking to keep themselves in the playoffs and also looking slightly above that as well. I'm sure we'll see how that pans out come the end of the season. Non-league now, Ryan Hindley's Hallam halfway through their four uh, consecutive home game streak. Couldn't have gone much better for them really because they won 5-0 last week against Hall Road Rangers and then they won 3-1 against AFC Mansfield on Tuesday night who were the big spenders in that league. Um, yeah. And they tra uh, take on Peniston on Saturday. TV That's cameras turned up I believe there. And they did indeed, yeah. yeah. BBC Look North uh, did a feature on them that, yeah. that night and they went and 
a month. Put some goals in, yeah. They yeah. went behind and then they quick, uh, quickly equalised and then I think they dominated the game after that. So um, very good from them. Uh, well get themselves back in those promotion spots as well. Sheffield FC, they're 15th in their league table and they're actually not that far away from being in the relegation spots. Uh, business end of the season now for them. They play against promotion chasers, Spalding United on Saturday afternoon. Steelers, obviously, we'll be hearing more from Jonathan on those uh, very shortly, but uh, they've got a very big game, first versus second against Cardiff on Saturday, and they travel up to Dundee on Sunday. Um, big, big game for them. Rugby Union, Sheffield Rugby Club, they were called off for their second consecutive week last weekend. It was only the Tigers game against Wirral that went ahead. That was another first versus second game. And Wirral actually inflicted the, uh, just the second defeat for the Tigers all season. Um, but they play against Birkenhead on Saturday. And I wouldn't want to be Birkenhead because the last time that the Tigers did lose in that league, they then inflicted a 77-point victory over cool. their opponents the following week. So, 77? Um, yes. So I think if we're, talk, if we're talking yeah. hairdryers, I think they may have had one the other day, right. <laughs> um, despite being apparently the better side in a 10-9 loss last week to Wirral. But they're still 13 points clear at the top of that league and very much look like they're already uh, promoted to National 2 North for next season as well. Women's basketball now, they were in the WBBL Cup final last week and the Sheffield Hatters um, who I'm talking about there fantastic victory against the Crusaders they won 79-45 comfortable victory and Helen Naylor uh, won the title of most valuable player well done to them still in performance and they retain their title and of course the top of their league as well and finish with individual oh. golfers Matt Fitzpatrick and Danny Willett were in action in the Eurasia Cup last week Europe beating Asia um, good because hope, hopefully those two will both be in Darren Clark's Ryder Cup side come September time and this week they're in action uh, first season uh, first tournament of the season uh, for them on the European Tour they're in Abu Dhabi Matt Fitzpatrick handily placed alongside Jordan Spieth on minus four in uh, tied seventh and Danny Willett tough day for him today three over par he's off at 10 to 8 tomorrow morning see if he can make the weekend OK, Sheffield Wednesday, another big weekend for them at Reading. Everything's going swimmingly for them at the moment with all these players signing up. Kevin uh, is a real momentum building. Kevin, uh, Gary Megson was here last week saying once a momentum like that starts, it can become unstoppable. I mean, you've experienced that yourself in, in your career at a couple of clubs. Yeah, there's, there's a good feel, there's a good feel good factor about the club at the moment, isn't there? Look, yeah. A few friend of, friends of mine, I go and watch them every week and they're playing some great football and I watched yeah. them against Leeds uh, at the weekend. Yeah. You know, they seem to be a good side and it's been noted they're scoring from everywhere, aren't they? They've yeah. scored some superb quality goals this season. But you season. know what was great last week against Leeds? They scored two scruffy goals, relatively scruffy mm, well, goals. Well, this Hooper could be a crucial signing because that's yeah. the kind of goals he will score. Yeah. So no, this Forestier is bending them in from all angles and then you've got another kid, Hooper, if yeah. he signs, will be getting the, the tap-ins and the scrambled goals. So he's he's getting a bit there. of everything. It was yeah. interesting when they, beat, when they beat Bolton uh, <laughs> last week and obviously Neil <laughs> Lennon managed Hooper at Celtic. Yes, and, he's, to him, yeah. and, and he said you know, he, yeah. was, he was the difference. So. He said he'd love to sign him again, the best strike mm. he's ever worked with, better than the championship. Uh, Owls fans... Uh, you know, on Twitter, I'm, every hour I'm getting a question, what's news on Hooper? I can only give you the, the, the update that probably the other guys are giving you that basically the word is it's progressing. Uh, it seems like a fee's been agreed, but personal terms have to be thrashed out. I've no reason to think it's not going to happen at this point, so ho hopefully it does. Back-to-back -back games. Uh, you know, every week we talk about you're going from Dundee to Cardiff or so, something ridiculous like this. This weekend you're going from Sheffield up to Dundee, is that right? We are, yeah. yeah. Straight up on, uh, on Sunday there to Dundee. It seems an impossible schedule. Why is it like that? It's just always been the same. Um, you know, from when we're young, we, we, we play we play back to back um, and then I mean you find that um, as soon as you start progressing through the Challenge Cup um, stages then we'll probably start playing like three games a week from from now until the end of the season so but you're not going to recover surely you're playing on a Saturday night you know I know that after a game the adrenaline is such and it doesn't matter what sport sometimes for commentators reports yeah. it's just the same you do a night match you can't sleep mm -hmm. not very easily how much sleep do you get between then and playing a game in Scotland? Yeah, I mean, we'll probably get about five, six hours, I think. 
Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'd say by the time you get to sleep off after the Cardiff game on the Saturdays, it's it's a good kind of two three o'clock in the morning by the time yeah. you've you know you've totally no nodded off and then um, <clears throat> I'm guessing we'll be leaving it to go to Dundee around tenish, so you know get up that's early get some turn, get some breakfast. Isn't it? I was going to say you know sometimes that's got to affect <clears throat> team selection or rotation or or something. Yeah. You, surely hasn't it somewhere that's along the right. line? I mean even though. You know, your coach and, and whoever else, and perhaps even the players, might not admit that that's the case. Sometimes, if you know, for example, Saturday, big game. Sunday, you might see some of the some of the more regular faces rested, maybe for the, for the vast majority of the game. Or Would you whatever. want to be? No, I, I I think if you ask any player, they they'd want to play every single minute and 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 go. But I mean. The thing with the hockey is our squads aren't aren't big enough. So, you, you know, have once, to once once the teams are. You know, once the teams are signed in the in the summer, then that's kind no of the rotation. team, and there's no there's no rotations. Yeah, we've let got no second team. Let me ask you in the short time left that you're about the Olympics, yeah, because yeah. you're one of three Steelers yeah. in the in the Great Britain squad. Yeah, uh, I think Fantastic. the others, yeah, Robert Dowd and uh, Ben O'Connor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've uh, I think we fly out on the tenth, I think, um, out to Cortina in Italy for the. Um, yeah, the first stage of the Olympic qualifiers. So um, we had we had fun a few years ago. We went out to Japan, um, where we were successful, and then you know got through to the last round. So we're hoping for for another successful tournament. And I hope time. you get there because it would certainly crown your career, wouldn't it? I mean, you're 33 now. You've got another year next year. Don't know how long you're going to go on for, but to go to the Olympics, that'll be fantastic. I mean, yeah. that'll be a dream come true. Is I mean, whenever you can. You have a chance to play for your country is you know is a huge honour, but I think to I think you know selfishly when 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 you when you think if I mean to a chance to play in the Olympics that's that's something dreams are made of I think absolutely terrific yeah. and I wish you well for that and and, and wish you mm. for a great climax to the Sheffield Steelers Thank season you. down at Sheffield Arena where you're pulling in I think you were telling me before the show a five and a half thousand average yeah yeah, yeah I think it's around that yeah. Yeah, no, things are going well, and um, you know the off-ice team are doing a good job to put a, you know, a good show on down there. So. There's fewer goals than I remember, though. They're very tight games now, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, every every team has got better this year, and and so yeah, the scoring's gone down. That the you know the 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 quality of of the players have gone up. And How many have you got this season? Uh, I, th I think I've got five this year. And that seems a relatively yeah. low number to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not a goal scorer. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. He's like a target man. Yeah. Yeah, facilitator, link man. Yeah, yeah? energy and, yeah, yeah. Skate, well, skate round causing yeah. havoc. Um, <laughs> whatever he's doing, he's doing, the, doing it well because he's yeah. going to be in the Olympics next year, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah, he's doing it very, very well indeed. <laughs> really? uh, 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 as you are behind the bar when you serve <laughs> in, in, in the kitchens or whatever. I'm not in the kitchens. <laughs> 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 I've got three chefs, that's, that's quite enough. Art of delegation. Where are the Blades going to finish then, finally? Um, I think we'll scrape into the playoffs. Scrape? That's not yeah. a very <clears throat> positive, upbeat well, way to win the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care how we get there, but yeah. I, th I think we'll, 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 we'll scrape in. I, I can't see us, you know, being being challenging for first or second. I think third is pushing it even. So, you know, we're going to be there or thereabouts on the on the on the fifth, sixth spots. Everybody will settle for scraping into the playoffs so as long as you then scrape through the playoffs. Well, finally, again, if you, if you just keep knocking on the door... <laughs> Eventually, it must happen. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks very much, Jonathan. Thanks as ever, as uh, James. See you next week with a big name from football and a big name from cricket. I can promise you that. In both cases, see you next week. Bye now. Bye.